America's pastime is, was, and always will be shooting. Hello everyone, Finn and Flask here. So today we're going to be talking a little bit about muzzle loading safety. And it's going to be a little bit more of a discussion that I hope people really add into this in the comment section if they have some things that they disagree with what I say or have things that I missed. I would really appreciate that feedback. Before we get into the meat of the video, if you wish to support the channel, you should check out my eBay store where I sell muzzle loading accessories. It'll be linked in the description. Okay, so I'm going to break this down into basically three different kinds of groupings for muzzle loading safety. Okay, so I'm going to talk about general firearm safety, then I'm going to talk about muzzle loading specific safety, and then I'm going to talk about muzzle loading specific things to be aware of. So I was in the Marine Corps, and I think for the basic safety rules that the Marine Corps gave, those apply, of course, to muzzle loading. And that's one, treat every weapon as if it were loaded. Never point your weapon at anything you do not intend to shoot. Rule number three is keep your finger straight and off the trigger until you are ready to fire. Rule number four in the Marine Corps is uh, keep your weapon on safe until you intend to fire. This kind of doesn't really apply much to muzzle loading because most of the time you're dealing with hammers and stuff like that. So if you're shooting inline muzzle loaders, they have safeties on them. But if you're shooting uh, traditional firearms, basically they don't have what we consider a regular bar safety. And actually when I took my hunter safety course, they didn't like that as a safety rule because it's a mechanical device and they think mechanical devices can fail. So I think maybe for a muzzle loading rule, you could say, well, maybe leave it uncapped or leave it in half cock. That seems to make sense to me because the half cock is a pretty solid position. Just like I often do, I overlooked eye protection and hearing protection. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna talk about is muzzle loading specific safety rules. And first and foremost is never use anything but approved black powder substitutes or real black powder because the pressure is completely different the way how it works with smoke whisk powder which is of course modern powder that you get out of any cartridge out there you never want to use smoke whisk powder because it will blow up your gun the next thing you want to think about is a muzzle loading specific safety rule is never pour powder directly from a flask into a gun that has been recently fired Okay, because there's a chance that in the barrel there can be embers and they can follow up your your flask or your powder horn and then detonate it like an explosion. So that is something you have to not do. When loading a weapon that has been fired recently, you need to use a powder measure or something else to pour your powder in to the barrel with. Because if it does flash over, it'll only flash over in your hand and you might get burned but it won't be like a fragmentation grenade. Here's another muzzle loading specific safety rule. This one's a little on the controversial side, but you want to seat the ball completely on the powder with no space. Reasoning behind that is they don't want the pressure to build up in that gap and make it like a pipe bomb. I think that's really, really unlikely, but you should consider that. So always seat your ball completely on the powder. The next thing that is not as crucial as those other two that could cause serious injury is with your ramrod. It's not as serious, but when you're loading, okay, you really don't want to push down like this. You want to get closer to the barrel and kind of load like this when you're muzzle loading because you can put too much flex in, say, a wooden ramrod and actually snap it so you can get some splinters in your hand. Here are some things that I'd like you to consider that are specifically muzzle loader related, and some people may disagree with me on these. One, with cap and ball revolvers, you should make sure you put your hammer down on an empty cylinder. Five shots. You can, this is going to be up for debate because some people say you can put it on the safety, the, the safety notches on a Colt, or in the safety slots in a Remington. The Remington, I'm a little more comfortable loading six in, but I still think the best way out to go about it is have it down in an empty chamber in case if anything happens, you don't shoot yourself or shoot somewhere else unintentionally. And another thing with cap and ball revolvers is a guy like me, generally speaking, I always load on a stand. Always cap when it's on the frame. 
I know some people will load it, uh, put the caps on when it's off the frame, but I just think that's a little sketchy and I would never do that. Another thing I think you should consider is when you're shooting to know where your powder is in relation to the end of your muzzle or your pan if you're shooting flintlock. So when you're shooting from a bag or whatever, you should always make sure your horn is behind you so that no embers can catch your horn on fire and have it detonate. Or if you're shooting at a bench and you have your powder down somewhere on a bench, you should always make sure it's far enough away or behind where you're shooting. This is one of those things that early on in my videos, people commented and they're right. And I've done a lot better about keeping it away. And I had a couple videos where I had it. It was close to me. It wasn't necessarily in front of the muzzle, but it was probably close enough that something, although probably really rare, could have happened. So you're better off just being aware of where your powder is in relation to your muzzle. This past weekend, I went to an NSSA event and they have a couple rules that are specific. And one of them is after you shoot, they shoot pretty much all cap locks that you have to leave the spent cap on the nipple before you pour your powder down. And this actually kind of makes sense because when you pour the powder down, you're giving a vent in case if there's an ember in there and it could, you know, flash in your hand. So they leave the cap on. That makes a lot of sense to me. So I'm actually going to start doing that myself just in case. Most of the time I just rip it right off, but that's something that definitely makes sense to me. Then the next thing they talk about is to not thumb the ball. So what they mean by thumbing the ball is pushing on it like this, pushing straight down on it. You really can't get away with not thumbing a ball if you're doing past round balls, but they're using mini balls. So basically they want you to go on the sides to push it in case if it does detonate, it just flies straight through your hand. And then the other thing is when you're running a ramrod, they want you to use only two fingers pushing it down because mini balls don't have much uh, resistance going down. So if it does detonate, it'll just shoot straight up. You really can't get away with that stuff if you're shooting rifle though with past round balls. And the last thing I have is it's kind of a personal thing for me because these things are pretty much generally used for hunting. And I think when you're in the field, if you're being active in the field, like I bird hunt with my shotguns, I want musket caps on there because I want to be able to easily pull a cap off where it's a little more difficult to pull a cap off with a regular percussion cap because they don't have those wings on it to pull them. So I think it's a little better to have musket caps for active hunting weapons. If you're sitting in a tree stand or sitting in a blind or something like that, you're not really going anywhere. Uh, you should be pretty fine. To just use a regular percussion cap. I actually use regular percussion caps when I'm down in Texas on my uh, Hawken. But if I was using that weapon active here in the Northeast, because most of my deer hunting I do is active. I go out and, you know, still hunt. Uh, I have messed around with tracking a little bit, but I'm not necessarily good at it. But that might change in the future. <laughs> but anyways, but most of my stuff is bird hunting. And when you're bird hunting and going th through some really thick, nasty stuff, you're in and around rivers, so you have to cross through rivers and stuff like that. And it's really important to just be able to pop that cap right off so that if you fall, you don't have to worry about it shooting you. So like I said to start this video, I would really appreciate if people comment things that they think I've missed. It would be very helpful because I might re-upload it if there's some certain things that I have missed. So, and I'm always wanting to be as safe as I can with these revolvers and shotguns and rifles and stuff like that. I always want to be as safe as possible. And I think everybody should try to be as safe as they can. So thank you for watching. If you appreciate my content, I'd appreciate it if you liked, subscribed, shared it with some friends. Thank you very much. And have a wonderful day. Mm -hmm.